Badger. Raven. Not quite finished yet. And the War Dove. If you're going to build the War Dove, obviously you're going to need some stuff. Three Dollar Tree foam board pieces, 20 by 30 inch sheets. One metal yardstick, metal for a reason, one inch in width. You're going to need one square, and you're going to need one see through ruler, some hot glue, some CA, some kicker, pen, box cutters. You get these from Harbor Freight for like 20 cents a piece some colored packing tape or clear packing tape, a sanding block. Very important are these three aluminum arrow shafts. One is gonna be your spar, the other two are gonna be the boom. And last but not least, one gigantic piece of wood. This is going to help you do the fold when it's time to forward your airfoil. So, you start with a standard 20 by 30 inch sheet of Dollar Tree foam board, known as ready board. We're gonna be working from the inside of the wing and I'm starting with the port side first. You can start with either side, obviously it doesn't matter because you're gonna do a mirror image on the next piece of foam board. The first step that we're gonna do is at the bottom left hand corner working on the root cord of this wing is that I'm gonna measure up three inches. Then I'm gonna measure across to 18. 18 is my wing span or 18 is my half span. I'm gonna measure up to three inches and leave a mark then I'm going to measure up to seven inches, which is this violet line and leave a mark. And then I'm gonna measure up again, another seven inches. That's gonna be the top of the cord, okay? This green line, which is one inch below the first cord line, you can say that's an imaginary line, but it's not imaginary. You're gonna put a former here, which is why the green line is there. This green line above the violet line which is two inches, I wrote score and peel because when you're ready to do it, you're gonna score this line with a razor, not cutting all the way through, score this line with a razor, not cutting all the way through, and then peel the paper off. This will give you a way to fold it over without wrinkling up your foam board. Now, on the tip cord, start from your 18 inch mark, which is your span. You're gonna go up four and a half inches, which is the violet line, and you're gonna go up another four and a half inches. Now, if you're gonna be using tape, these lines are necessary. If you're gonna be using tape to cover your plane and color your plane, and say you want a transition of two different colors, just so you can note your orientation, it's gonna be necessary to flip your board over and start from this corner and mark out the same lines. You go up three inches, you go up to seven inches from three, so that's 10, and then you go up to 17. You mark your cord line at 18, and then mark up to four and a half, and then four and a half, and connect the lines. Now, you could try to go for a larger cord, but here's the problem with a larger cord. In order to accomplish this wing, we're gonna have to fold everything over. So here's why a larger cord or a longer cord is not going to work. If you go at this corner and look, and you put your square on it, you can see that when you fold over, the paper is going to go that way. So if you go with a longer cord up here, too long, you're not gonna have enough room to form your ailerons. To explain better why, why do a three inch inset here is to accomplish the sweep of the wing. We already have the taper because we're starting out with a seven inch main cord or a seven inch root cord and a four and a half inch tip cord. So there's your taper, but to get the sweep, you had to start someplace higher than just parallel to the bottom of the foam board. So we go in three inches. By doing that, once you're finished with both of your wings, it should look a lot like this right here. Or should I say exactly like this. There's your sweep. Now, knowing that you got a seven inch cord here, and a four inch cord here, if you use your square and went across over, you would notice that it's a six inch drop. That drop is gonna be important because I use the online calculators for CG, and of course, your drop angle or your drop distance is gonna be important in determining where the CG is gonna be. The CG on this wing is pretty much gonna be about right here, but we'll get to that later on. 
So for the root cord on this foam board, you're gonna make your first mark at three inches. Then from the three inch mark, you go up another seven inches and leave a mark. And then again, another seven inches and leave a mark. It's very simple to do. Once you've done all that, you can turn your attention to the tip cord. Now it's time to pull out your yardstick. My yardstick is made out of metal because it serves two purposes. What I'm going to do is measure from the root cord to the tip cord. And in this case, it's gonna be an 18 inch span. And then I'm gonna pull out my square and mark up from that 18 inch point to two spots, one at four and a half and one at nine. From the three inch mark at the root cord, you're gonna measure diagonally across to your 18 inch span mark. And after you've made that line, go ahead and cut off that piece of foam. You won't be needing it anymore. Then you're gonna make a connecting line between the tip of the root cord at seven inches and the tip of the tip cord at four and a half. And then you're gonna do it one more time. The dimensions that I'm using are not set in stone. These are just the numbers that I'm used to when I build these planes known as the War Dove, and before that, it was the Phoenix. This next step that I'm doing with the square is not necessary. I'm only doing it because I want to know what the drop angle is before I decide to find out my center of gravity. By using the square in this manner, all I do is make intersecting lines between the leading edge of the tip cord and the leading edge of the root cord giving my drop center, my drop angle. There will be a point at which you need to score the paper of the foam, peel the paper away, and then fold the wing over on itself. Probably don't have to tell you this, but of course you're gonna pull out your ruler and mark up to that first four inch mark or four and a half inch mark and cut a line right there because you're gonna to have to fold at that point. So that black piece of wood that I mentioned earlier, I'm gonna use that as a break. I'm gonna lay that on the transition line. When you did the score and the peel, you left the spot where there is foam on one side and paper on the other. And you're gonna sit that gigantic piece of wood right on top of it pull up on your foam board and massage the crap out of it and then over fold it and as you can see it folds up and to the right which is why you start out with a 30 inch sheet of foam board and not an 18 inch sheet of foam board. At this point I'm using my square again. The square happens to have a two inch wide edge. I need that so I can mark out where my ailerons are going to be and I want it to be exaggeratedly long because I need the excess to trim off later. I'm going to trim it off later because I don't know how much space this foam board is going to take up once I put my formers in there and fold it over. So after you use your square as a guide, you can go ahead and trim off your excess, obviously. Go ahead and get that out of the way and get ready for the next step. Next step will obviously be joining the two wings together, installing your formers and installing your spar. Now that you've got your spar in place, you flip the wing over on its back. One at a time, you're going to push down on the two folds and make yourself a guideline where the upper half of the wing touches the bottom. The whole purpose of the guideline is so that you have a reference mark for your hot glue. You don't want any squeeze out at this point because there's going to be a time where you need to cut into your foam board to make your hinges. So be very careful at this point. You still have the wing flipped over on its back. You run a nice generous bead of hot glue, pull over the bottom half of the wing and push it down steadily. Now I told you that my metal yardstick had two purposes. Well, the second purpose of that yardstick is to absorb all the heat through that foam board to make the glue cure faster. At this point, it's time for me to go ahead and use my one and a half inch plastic ruler to cut out my ailerons. In other words, I'm cutting off all that excess that I left for myself to give myself a one and a half inch surface for the aileron. Now, on this plane, the aileron will not be full span, but I'm gonna start with this and we'll work with something later. Now, this is me jacking around with my brand new wing, thinking it's some kind of Klingon weapon or something. So 
but after marking about a quarter inch in from the trailing edge, I decided to peel that paper off. Because the next step means that you need to sand the trailing edge of your ailerons. That quarter inch mark that you left for yourself when you peeled the paper off gives you enough room to sand at about a 25 degree angle to give you a nice sharp clean edge on the trailing edge of your aileron just to give it a little bit less resistance and a lot of little wind deflection stuff going on at the back of the wing. The canopy consists of four main pieces of foam board, a left, a right, a top, and a bottom. In the last photo, you saw three pieces of foam board. The one on the far right was actually a template. I used that to determine where the canopy is going to go and how the canopy is going to be shaped. And then I used that later on to trace onto the other two pieces of foam board so I don't miss my marks. As long as I got two pieces that are exactly the same, even though they're mirror images of one another, I'm good to go. But that's pretty much obvious, isn't it? It's very important that you go ahead and trace your canopy markings on your other two pieces before you try to put them together. You don't want to know how much of a pain in the ass it is to try to line up marks when the thing is already put together and you've got compound curves in your fuselage. So for the bottom half of that fuselage, I went with a piece of foam board that was two and three quarter inches wide. And then I had a slow graduated curve from about seven inches back up to the nose. This is how you accomplish the fuselage shape. I don't have to tell you how careful you need to be at this point, trying to glue together these two pieces of foam board with CA. For this application, hot glue takes too long to cure, too much time for a mistake to happen. Don't even bother measuring the pieces for the top. Just lay them on top, glue them, and then cut off the excess later. This has to be the simplest part of the build. You don't even need to explain it, but you must consider the fact that the plane is going to encounter a lot of stress here, so you cannot rely on hot glue you need to use epoxy. Frankly, the only way I can think of to secure those booms to the bottoms of the wings has always been rubber bands to hold them in place and using epoxy on the arrows over the arrows on top of the arrows to make sure nothing falls off. The plane has been assembled, you can see that the overall length of this plane is somewhere around 37 inches. Of course, the span is 36 inches. The booms are actually 20 inches long. And we have a gap between the two booms where they were spaced to accommodate the prop at about 13 inches. The wing is actually set about one third of the way down of the total length of the plane. So the wing tip or leading edge starts at about 14 inches. You can go a little bit less, you can go a little bit more. What's important is that the end of your root cord stops at the very end of the fuselage. This will leave you space to put your motor. All you have to do is take the bottom of the wing, cut out a notch just so you can still glue it on top of the fuselage, and then you can situate your motor right into the notch. Make sure you center it, obviously. Make sure you set all your ailerons correctly. Make sure you set your center of gravity correctly. I use an online calculator and my center of gravity, like I said earlier, was just about right here. So like I said, you can use colored packing tape to color your planes if you want to. Here are just some examples of what I did to keep my orientation in the sky. But nowadays I use polyurethane, minwax that is, and airbrush painting. Obviously the purpose of the minwax is just to waterproof the foam board paper so it doesn't get jacked up when you start airbrushing. The cool thing about the airbrushing is that you can decide for yourself how you want to plan to look, right? And I always go camouflage for some reason because that's like the easiest pattern to do. So here we are at the finished product. I hope somebody found this video to be both entertaining and informative. I hope that someone out there tries to copy this plane. But I'm going to tell you something, you're going to be at it for a while. These things take a long ass time to build. Seven to nine hours is about right. 